Who's gonna take a risk with Dave Allen on a show? Who? Would you take a risk with him if you were a promoter? Would I asked Dennis, would you have Dave Allen on a show? He said no, not now he said that. Because everybody will be saying I'm a, I'm a slave master if I put Dave Allen on a show and he ends up with brain damage or a blood clot or disabled for life. He dug his sent in an hole. Whether they were doing it to play the victim or play the sympathy or to get views, I don't know because these things about he does numbers and he does views. Cooks, does he do any numbers? What numbers does he do? Or oh, I like Frank Smith at Matchroom, but when Frank talks, he tends to talk about, oh, how many numbers did you do on that interview and all that? Well, my numbers, I don't do many numbers on my channel. We're just straight talkers. If we upset anybody on this channel, I don't mean to. All I want to do on this channel is get things out there and try and build up a picture from what we're seeing on social media. If anybody would like to come on this channel who works in the boxing industry and say to me, Porky, you're wrong. You shouldn't have said that about me. You are more than welcome to come on this channel and get your side across so the fans can hear it. And I want to ask you questions. I'd like to ask Dillian White's brother why he's saying he's called Dean White when in, that's not his name. I want to ask him that. Am I doing anything wrong wondering that? Why somebody's got his own company and he's saying he's somebody he's not. He might be a good person, I don't know. He looks a tasty geezer, but he's in boxing industry and so am I. I work in boxing industry with Dennis. I do this channel and I'm a bit of a loud mouth, but if you get to know me, you'll see I'm not. But I just want things to be right in boxing. And anybody who said that they don't like what I come out with, well, I can only go on what I'm seeing, can't I, on what you come out with in your interviews. Come on my channel and let's have a chat. And I'll, I've got loads of questions here. I can ask Dean, I can ask Spencer Fearon, I can ask anybody who wants to come on the channel. The door is always open. Or come and visit me here and we can have an interview. Could do one in the flesh, baby. The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. <laughs> we can do a thunder lips from Rocky Free. Not only joking, but we can have an interview. We can get I can get your point across and say, well, it's wrong for fans to say that, and you shouldn't believe what you read on these forums or on social media and blah de blah. Well, let's have in, let's have an interview. Let's get Eddie Earn on here. We spent enough on them two big billboards, didn't I? They still didn't come on. I think young Frank Smith will come on at some point. We could do it by phone, but let's have them on. Let's let's have these people on the channel, and we can ask them loads of questions, and we can get to the bottom about what's what's happening in boxing because Porky's Corner is going in the right direction at the moment, and I'm really, really, really pleased about where we're heading with the channel. I think it's brilliant, and I think that. Uh, it's a great platform I've got. Somebody called it a platform today and I never heard that before. I didn't realise that so many people watched the channel in the boxing industry until I heard this morning. Off a few people I spoke to this morning. And maybe a lot of people in the boxing industry watch it, but a lot of people in the casual the casual fans maybe they don't, but it'd be nice if they did. But I think there's about 40% who watch it, they were 48, there's about 40% who watch the channel and don't subscribe. So come on, subscribe, give me a bit of kudos. Like the videos as well and leave a nice comment. You know, if you're going to leave a negative comment, leave it. But if anybody wants to come on this channel, send an email to porkycorner at mail.com. Porkycorner at mail.com. The Twitter handle is at corner porky but porky corner at mail.com not at gmail just porky corner at mail.com send me an email and I will interact with you but keep it clean there's a, couple, there's a person on here who, who always seems to dig me out but I don't know if it is him because there's that many double agents why is there so many double agents come on let's keep it to yourselves and be real and let's keep the let's grow the channel we all love boxing, don't we? That's why you all tune in. That's why when I put a video out, 300 views in the first hour and a half. Because 
there's a there's an hardcore audience. Probably, I don't know, 10% of my followers want to see it straight away, and I think that's brilliant. I think that's brilliant. Touches my heart, but I also want the best for fighters. Don't think I don't, because I do. But I understand that fighters want to get as much money as they can out of boxing. But I also understand that there has to be an area where there has to be a balance. For example, Billy Joe Saunders, elite fighter, two-time world champion, 28-0, undefeated, 13 knockouts. He can fight. He's in the ring. He didn't want to knock you out. He's practicing his art. He reminds me of Roy Jones. He, and Tyson Fury, they're practicing their art, aren't they? They're showing the skills off. Billy don't get hit, does he? Don't get hit. Tyson don't get hit. Got hit twice against Wilder. Too, too many. Wilder only needs to get you once, doesn't he, and to knock you out. Now Tyson got up both times, but the fact that he got dropped, in my opinion, means that he's chinny. Because if you're getting dropped, you're chinny, aren't you? Am I right? He got dropped against Steve Cunningham. He got dropped against some other, somebody else as well who weren't, weren't very good. Now, I think maybe a couple of them were a balance problem, but I think he's a bit chinny, Tyson. I do. Uh, has he got a heart? Yes. He could take big shots, but Wilder's massive puncher in his soul. He could put your lights out at any time. He only needs to eat you once in 36 minutes. Tyson's got to keep him off him for 36 minutes. Long time, that's why the rematch won't happen. But, if Tyson wants to come on the channel, he can, but I've already met Tyson several times, so he doesn't really need to come on the channel. But, I would be welcoming any Tyson fans to come on. We had Stig on the other day, Oasis One, Robert Britton, Richard Francis, Big Cali Boxing, is it? Email me your phone numbers, and I will ring you. And you can come on this channel and you can say your bit. You don't have to say your bit on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. You can say your bit on the channel itself, not on the comment section. You can speak to me. I'll rig this up. Oh, the one in cars a bit better. And if you come out with any crap, I'll just go. I'll just press that if you're coming out with any bull, any BS. But you're more than welcome to come on the channel because this channel is for interacting with the fans and we're not doing enough of it. I want fans to come on every single day. I want five days a week for 30 minutes. I'm going to pick somebody, but you've got to get in touch with me if you want to come on and you've got to state what you want to talk about first. Email me something you want to talk about and we'll talk about it. Anything, it can be anything in life, but try and keep it boxing related. I've had Terry Fox on it, he was brilliant. Scott's been on, Lee. Uh, Dale, Dale's been on, he's a good close friend of mine. Uh, Terry chapendama has been on, Rico, he's a close friend of mine, like Terry, they've been on. There's a few people been on the channel, you're more than welcome to come on. Alright, but let's keep it clean if you do come on. Alright, but you're more than welcome to come on. So, like I said, let me just finish off here now. Uh, sounds like a bad deal for the fans, the Saudi Arabia thing. Yeah, I think it is a bad deal for the fans. Uh, and, but Eddie's going on about the, the fact that they've invested, they're investing in boxing. Well, that's good because, like I said, Eddie don't invest in boxing, does he? As I said earlier, five world champions in 33 years. And is it seven purse bids won? They don't win purse bids. For example, Chris Eubank Sr. was a five-year world champion, WBO. Now, he ended up with a career-winning streak of... He won 19 world title fights, the WBO. 19. Out of them 19, Nigel Benn was a champion. And the other three, Nigel Bennett at 160, 160 pounds. The other three that he beat at 168 were former champions. Now, who were the other 15 that Chris Eubank fought? It's a bit like Carl Zaghi. He beat eight world champions out of 22 title wins. But who were the other 14? 
that's a WBO as well. This is a problem I have with boxing now. Chris Eubank went to fight Steve Collins, but Barry Hearn didn't even win the purse bid. Why is that? Why didn't Barry Hearn win the purse bid? Why? Did he have the money? Or did he have, did, well, were the problems going on behind the scenes? Is that when he cashed her behind him, first defence, to Riddick Bow? I don't know, but to, to hardly win any purse bids and to let your champion, who was, who was a big breadwinner for him, Eubank, because he put them on map with boxing. If Eubank's losing, promoter Barry Hearn's losing purse bids in world title fights in Ireland, why is that? Well, is that because Barry Hearn doesn't have to put the show on? And they're going to sit there with hand out or what? It would have still been a great show in England, but from a business point of view, it's the biggest show in Ireland, isn't it? And the Hearns are business people. Accountants by name, accountants by nature. And I know I dig them out for that, but their job is to generate as much money for the fighters, but also for themselves. So I'm not going to dig them out as much unless they're digging out, just for the sake of it. Let's try and put a positive spin on things. They're going to Saudi, which means that the British fans are going to suffer. There won't be 90,000 cheering, there'll be 12. 12, if that. Eddie's saying there could be 15, but at the moment they're building a stadium for 12, but they ain't long to build it. And, it, and Joshua weren't at the press the other day, and neither were we. And I think it's all a bit... Nobody really knows if it's going to happen. People like Lennox Lewis are saying it's not going to happen. And I don't know, I'm a bit I'm a bit sceptical, a bit like the Kovalev fight. Till I see Kovalev in the ring with Anthony Yard, I don't I see things that happen daily. I'm not bragging or anything, but I see things that change daily. And you the the boxing fans, the hardcore boxing fans, won't see as much as what I see because I'm showing off what because I'm not spectacular. I'm only a T-boy for Denny Sarn and run about. I'm there to learn, aren't I? But I think sometimes boxing can get frustrating and you can, you can feel downtrodden, downtrodden I feel sometimes when it downtrodden and some of the things you're told then know what happens. 2018 were a great year and 2019 were going to be fantastic but big money's coming to boxing and what's happened? People are jumping ship left, right and centre and not risking their O's and... You know, Billy Joe's had 28 fights, but four years ago he won a world title. Leading up to that world title, people were talking about him against Golovkin and Canelo. It's not happened. But yet, Martin Murray, Matthew Macklin, Rocky Fielding, Callum Smith's brother Liam, have all fought Golovkin and Canelo, aren't they? So... As far as I'm concerned, if them sort of people can fight Canelo and Golovkin, surely Billy, Billy Joe can, can't he? Because Billy Joe's skill set, I think, beats Golovkin. It, Canelo, God, that's like a 50.5 like 50, 50 against a 49.5, with Billy being, in my opinion, the, probably the 50.5 or, or a 50% against a 50%, but... Oh, my advantage could be the difference on that one. It's such a fine line. Because Billy don't get hit, does he? But he don't punch hard enough to work Ke Canelo. Because if Golovkin's hitting him with big punches and he's not moving him, Bill's not going to move him. So it's a 12-rounder, isn't it? Is it a Billy Joe win on 12? I don't know. Would he get the nod against Canelo? Because Canelo fought Mayweather. And how many rounds did he win against Mayweather? One round? One round, maybe. And that were maybe close. One round against Mayweather, but the one judge had it a draw. Other two had it to Mayweather, didn't they, easily. But does Billy Joe beat Canelo on points? Maybe, but does he get the nod? Did Tyson Fury beat Wilder on points? You could say he shaded it, yeah. But he didn't get the nod, did he? One of the judges were miles out. That's what happens when you fight away from home. Now Tyson said he wanted to have everything stacked in his favour in the big fight, so he went with Bob Arum, and he's fighting in America still, so that's great. But he's not in the big fights, is he? He ain't, is he? He's not in the big fights. Otto Wallin is a poor example for a fight, isn't it? 
very, 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 very poor example for a fight. For a Lanial defence, would that get passed for a WBC uh, defence? No, it isn't, because the Lanial thing is not there, is it? He hasn't got it no more. People need to get over that fact. All these people that say it's Lanial, it's just... Look, people are not going to say go against Bob Arum because they want to wait with him, but I know what the, the whispers are. Well, you've only got to see people coming out with it. Eddie Hearn, Dillian White, but they're rivals, aren't they? People who are Bob Arum fighters who want to get on the show or the friends of Tyson and fighters who are friends of Tyson. Like Isaac Lowe's running around saying Tyson is Lanial champion. Well, if him and Tyson for that, he wouldn't say that, would he? But when you want to get on the show, Ben Davison says Tyson is Lanial champion. Look, I don't think he is. I think he's got best skill set out of all heavyweights, but he won a, he's won one world title fight four years ago. Four years ago, Tyson Fury beat Vladimir. But he was ducking Vladimir for ages. One, he had ample opportunity to fight him. He had ample opportunity to rematch him. It didn't happen. Four years ago, he beat Vladimir. That's his world title win. One. One. One world title win and four years later, we're still saying he's Laniel. Come on. Fighting Sarifi, Pianetta, draw against Wilder, Schwartz and Otto Wallin. He got five fights there, four wins and a draw because he'll beat Otto Wallin. But is he the lineal champion? No. Is he the best out there? Probably just shades it, yeah. Probably the best guy out there. But will he fight Wilder in rematch? If he does, I will take a bow to him and tip my hat. Do I want him to win? Of course I'm going to want him to win. He's a Brit, isn't he? Of course I want him to beat Wilder. Will he beat Wilder? If he gets caught, he's going to go, isn't he? If he don't get caught, he wins every round, doesn't he? He only needs to land one punch because he ain't never going to win seven rounds. Why there is he boxing Tyson? So he's just going to stalk him and look for that, look to set him up, innit? His opportunity will be jumping on him early or dragging it out late and tiring Tyson out. But Tyson's a 20 round fighter. So it is what it is, innit? But one of them things. But getting back to boxing as a whole at the moment. I'm not impressed by it at all and I'm losing a bit of sparkle for it and who knows I might even take channel in a different direction and look at doing other stuff because I'm unhappy about boxing at the moment, I'm very unhappy. People are not fighting anybody, we're just being told a load of whatever. Promoters just want to get money off fans don't they, in my opinion they just want to get money off us, pay per view, ticket money, I mean Anthony Joshua is sold as this Brit. You know, he's sponsored by British Airways. He's sold as this Brit who's whatever, gonna do great things. He's, and, and he's putting Britain first, but he's fighting in New York and fighting in Saudi. Well, who's, who's, where are the fans' money gonna come from? What about being a stay humble, man of the people? Yes, it's nice to go to Saudi Arabia, but what about your fans? Why can't they send other people there to build it up? Saudi Arabia have done two shows, haven't they? Yui Fury's show, Channel 5, and they did, we have Khan on it as well, and they've just done that one lately, haven't they? So they took one of the MTK show out there. It's all good, positive stuff, but I would have liked to seen Joshua fight in UK if they're going to do it, and it's better for the fans, isn't it? Ruiz, Ruiz at Stumbling Block, he looks like he wants it in America, but... I want to see Tyson fight in UK again, but is he building his profile up for a homecoming? I don't know. Is Tyson looking to go to Saudi? Is that what it's going to be now? Is Tyson Fury going to go fight in Saudi? Because what does that mean then? What do they care for British fans then? If it's all going to be abroad? I don't know, but does Tyson know anything to the British public? No, I don't think he does. He would treat like a dog after he won world title, so... Is he, what is Tyson bothered about? Is it belts? Well, no, he's got every belt there is, hasn't he? Except Wilders, so. Got four wheel title belts, ring magazine belt. He's got British, uh, English, British, Irish, Commonwealth, European, and four wheel title belts and ring belt. He's got, he's got loads of belts. 
It's about money for Tyson and getting getting a, earning what he's what he's due. And yeah, if he wants to set his family up and their family and their family and next generations, that's good, isn't it? Isn't that good? He's shrewd with his money. But let's get a balance. Let's get the right fights on at the right time and in the right country. We're not just talking venues in the UK. We're talking in the right country now. I mean, Saudi Arabia, where you can't drink alcohol and where women have to wear certain outfits and it's very easy to get locked up and it's very expensive to go. What, what's going on here? What's going on? I just think it's crazy. But let's hope that the big power brokers in boxing uh, don't let it all, all don't let all the big fights go out there. You know, let's let's hope the love gets shared. I mean, we were told the UK is where it's at. Let's hope that Bob Arams and your MTKs and people like that can can sort of like not have every big show out in Saudi because the way Eddie Hearn's talking, he's going to be out there all the time. And I mean, they're looking at getting officers out there. Some people were telling me today. I mean, is that a good thing? I don't know. Is Eddie spreading himself a bit thin? Yeah, I think he is. I think when he was in England, they were more, they were more transparent. But I think now that he's gone out to Saudi, I think it's not, now that he's working out there, I think that Eddie's uh, spread himself a bit thin. And even his interviews now, they all look a bit rushed and he, all, he always seems to be like on the run, you know, running to a taxi, being chased by a barbershop, Fred from barbershop, and he's going from a taxi to an airport. Eddie's, look, his life looks a bit rushed and I wonder how long he can keep this up for as well because I know how fed up I get helping Dennis out and sometimes doing this channel, but... But then again, Eddie's not going to get fed up because he's got everybody tickling his feet with a feather, with a, with a feather, hasn't he? And, you know, he, he's earning millions of pounds. So when you're earning millions of pounds and somebody's tickling your feet, everything's all right, isn't it? Everybody's blowing smoke up your ear end. So, five, yeah? All right then. So, but let's hope that all the big fights don't end up in Saudi Arabia. You know what I mean? What you put them there for? Are they mine? Yeah. But uh, it is what it is, isn't it? I've been told I've got to take cod liver oil. I've got some multivits in here as well. If you want any vitamins, the Robin Reed. These are not Robin Reed ones. These are cod liver oils. Robin Reed multivits, but. Uh, Codly Royal tablets stop your bones creaking. But let's hope that you know, let's hope that all these shows they don't all go to Saudi because you know it's nice to go to a big show, isn't it? But no. People I wanna thank now, I wanna thank CS Raps for I wanna thank CS Raps for doing me for doing me eat car. Uh, but, uh, I've had that black edition done, you know, on that on chrome. My old chrome took off and all black around doors and that. That fog light, I like it. CS Raps, I want to thank you for that and for what you've done for me. It's really great, uh, Nathan. And I want to thank uh, K Fishel. I stood by him for six months when I couldn't get anybody to upload the videos. They've been great to me. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for your kind words last night. Uh, thank Climber Cool and South Yorks Packaging here, Rob Rum. So it's all good positive stuff. Uh, I want to thank Spencer Fearon for the phone call that I received off him. Uh, he's a pretty positive person, Spencer Fearon. Uh, I don't think we'll ever be best buddies, but uh, I want to thank you for your input regarding advice on my channel and how I should put things across. Maybe I were a bit harsh on Spencer Fearon, but uh, I didn't like the fact that, you know, he said that Rivers failed a drug test. I thought Spencer were towing the Sky Company line, and, you know, well, we've moved on, haven't we, now, anyway, from that. And, uh, it is what it is, but 
so I want people to keep supporting the channel because there's a lot of things lined up for the channel and if anybody's got any ideas about the channel moving forward come on and we'll have a chat about it and we'll, I'll stick the camera on and we can film it, it's all good positive stuff, there's loads of things that we can do behind the scenes and there's some good positive things happening but uh, it's all good positive things yeah some of it's negative and boxing is negative uh, for example Gavin McDonald's fighting a guy ranked 532 I think that's negative because he knocked a fight back with Josh Whale for 10 grand plus a deal on tickets he's going to fight a guy ranked 532 he's just fought uh, Gavin McDonald's just fought a guy ranked 1038 after fighting a guy ranked number three, a world champion in Chicago, he goes from number three box right to a guy ranked what over 1,000, and he went to point to him, I believe, and then he's fighting a guy ranked over 500 now. So what is that all about? When he could fight Josh Whaler, former British champion, and a guy who ripped off a European title belt, boxing throws up surprises, and some of it really cheeses me off because it's a good trade fight from two, two kids here, one a former European champion and one a former British champion or one and also a kid who should have been a European champion so that's a good fight so that's cheesed me off a little bit but we'll move forward with somebody for Josh Whale and, uh, but it is a bit, it has cheesed me off a little bit because obviously I signed Josh for Dennis didn't I and uh, I just but it is what it is, isn't it? It's we're all trying to do our little bit, aren't we, to help boxing grow? I only play a tiny little small part. I'm just like a, f I'm no, I'm a real, I'm just like a skid mark, aren't I? I'm no spectacular, and I'm a prick most of the time, aren't I? But I mean, well, my heart's in the right place. But I want boxing to grow, and I want the fans to be happy. So keep your comments coming, keep your emails coming. Porky Corner at mail.com. Twitter handle is at corner porky subscribe on twitter subscribe on channel when you subscribe on the youtube channel you get your video straight to your phone all right but it's all positive stuff so peace out keep on trucking shout out to robin reed robin let me know when we're doing that interview still waiting you're gonna make me look daft if we don't do it now we can do it by phone but i'd rather come to your house than that because i'm gonna go over and see Frank Smith, not Frank Smith from Matcham with the spots, you know, Richie Rich, Frank Smith, my pal, Big Frank, and probably go see Peter and Huey when I'm over there, so, alright, so, peace out, keep on trucking, don't do anything I want though, and drive safe on your way home, anybody who's out boozing, alright, so, that's about it really, you've got, I bet there's an hour there, what we've got here, a couple of minutes, there's, an easy, there's easily an hour there, so I think that's covered about everything really. We'll cover the Tyson Fury Otto Wallin, that's a terrible fight. The Saudi one, will it happen? Yard Kovalev, will that happen? I hope that does. Uh, I think Kovalev's a favourite in that, but I hope Yard does it. And it's all good, positive, positive stuff. Alright, boom. A little bit of training now. I'm going to need it, aren't I, if uh, we're, we're, my late, we're my latest uh, fan club. <laughs> I'm only joking. So peace out. I hope that you've all enjoyed the video because what we try to serve upon here is no